Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to talk about how you can dominate an arena in Chapter 2 Season 4. Just like with every new season, arena points have been reset, meaning we're all forced to grind back to champs. The big difference, however, is that we're currently in Fortnite Season 14. The game has completely changed from the one we're used to in the last few seasons. There's new locations on the map, new mythic abilities, as well as a whole new meta we have to adapt to. In addition to that, Epic actually added a global arena leaderboard you can view on their website. This is the perfect way to make a name for yourself and to show off your hard work. Therefore, my goal as it always has been is to help you guys achieve your goals. I'll be sharing all the strategies I learned from the top arena players that I know for a fact will help you gain more than a thousand arena points per day. They're seriously that useful and Papa Jerry and approved. So sit back, relax, and take out a pencil as this is my ultimate arena guide for chapter 2 season 4. Usually in my arena videos, before I get into the actual tips and tricks, I begin by covering the point system. I talk about the points or hype you get for playing placement, the points you get for an elimination, and then based on the format, I advise you to either W key or play for placement. Well, Epic has not changed the way arena works in more than three seasons now. I kinda thought they would this season because they added a new leaderboard, but Epic is Epic and they just do not care about fixing it. Feels bad, man. Regardless, all you need to know is that it still takes 6,000 hype to reach Champions League, you get 20 hype per elimination, and placement is still the way to go. Now, onto the actual strategies, let's start with the most important part of the match, the early game. For like the past 6 or so seasons, I've constantly been preaching how RNG the early game is. From random people landing on you to not finding shield, I've never been a fan of the beginning of a match. I guess Epic must have known this, and they purposely wanted to spite me because they did the unthinkable and they changed chest spawn rates. Yes, you heard that correctly, Epic went in the wrong direction and reverted 100% chest spawn rates. I'm not gonna lie, this is the single worst part of the new season. I really enjoy the new season, and I think it's one of the best Epic has put out in a while, but the fact that chests do not always spawn ruins it for me. Regardless, enough of my complaining, we need to adapt and deal with it. One tip which I did mention in my tips and tricks video from the other day, is to stop landing on potential chest spawns. There's just way too much RNG with chests. What you should do instead is land on floor loot, or land on a chest that you can see. Both of these strategies heavily reduce your potential bad RNG, and increase the chance you find weapons and or shield. Like, just think about it. Would you rather land on a green tack SMG you see in a floor loot spawn, or would you rather land on the roof of a house where there may or may not be a chest? The obvious answer is the floor loot since you know it'll actually be there when you land. Another way to reduce your RNG in the early game is to do what a ton of pros are doing by fishing. Fishing is the meta this season for a few different reasons. One is that Epic added a total of 5 new fish, meaning there's 8 different types of fish in total. You have floppers which heal for 50, shield fish which grant 50 shield, slurp fish which grant 50 health or shield, and jelly fish which give you 20 health or shield. I know I left out thermal fish, hop floppers, and small fry, but they're not as useful as the others since they don't heal for as much, so I'm not gonna include them. Then the second reason fishing is the meta is that boats can explode fishing holes for really good loot. I'm still not sure whether or not this was intended, but it's currently in the game and it's currently overpowered as heck. All you need to do is aim a boat missile at a fishing hole and when you explode it, you always get 3 items of loot. A pretty crazy strategy that I've been using with this boat trick is to land on a boat off spawn. On. I kid you not, I will land straight on a boat and utilize all the fishing holes around me. But Jarian, that's so stupid, how do you get weapons? Well little Timmy, at the moment, fishing holes give you blue rarity weapon loot and above. You can get blue burst ARs, blue charged shotguns, blue silenced SMGs, blue snipers, as well as all the 8 different fish I mentioned before. So if you're sick of getting terrible loot off rip due to the chest spawn change, do yourself a favor and incorporate a boat into your looting route. I made an entire video on great solo drop spots with them, none of them are really contested, plus as as long as you have the best drop off the battle bus, you're basically guaranteed to win the spot. Second to last aspect of the early game is choosing your loadout. I know a lot of you guys want me to make a shotgun guide video, but I don't really feel like it's necessary. To me, the pump is the king of season 4. It shoots instantly unlike the charge, it always does solid damage, and it's reliable. The combat on the other hand is absolutely terrible. The thing does 50 damage. I'm not kidding when I say I'd rather have a white pump than a gold combat. That's all you need to hear to know that the combat sucks. As for the charge, shotgun, the charge is the same exact weapon it was last season. It's not bad per se, especially when you compare the white and green variants to the same rarity pumps, it's just not amazing. Why use a weapon that needs to charge up to do fat damage, when you can just use a point and click weapon like the pump, which will hit for just as much or slightly less. Based on that reasoning, I almost always try to side grade from a charge to a pump, and or upgrade from a blue pump to a purple pump. The purple and gold pumps are by far the best shotguns in Fortnite Season 4. Speaking of solid weapons in Season 4, I'm also a 
a huge fan of the new Stark Industry energy rifles. These things do crazy damage from far away and remind me a lot of the infantry from Season X. Last thing I wanted to say regarding the loot pool is that this season is the season of utility. You have bouncers, crash pads, shockwave grenades, boogie bombs, port of fortresses You have all the utility you could ever want to make it to the mid game. I suggest you all utilize as much of them as you can, especially the boogie bombs because they're broken, to get kills and to set yourself up for the later stages of the match. To finish up my strategies for the early game, I briefly want to remind you guys where to rotate to. When I say the early game, I'm referring to the time from when you drop off the battle bus to the second that the first circle fully closes in. My recommendation for where to rotate to is the dead side of the first circle, not the center of it, the dead side. If you don't know what dead side is by now, then you seriously deserve to get smacked. In game of course. Seriously though, the dead side of circle is the half of the zone where the least amount of people are rotating in from. Here's an example I found on reddit from a user named tapped that's a little old. Nonetheless, it does a great job of explaining the dead side. As you can see, CS at the top stands for congested side and DS on the bottom stands for dead side. The congested side is the top half of the circle because the first safe zone went south. This means that everyone from the northern part of the map is going to be forced to rotate in, which tap shows with the yellow lines, while everyone on the south side of the map can just chill, leaving the whole bottom side of the circle dead. Oh, and before I forget, tap drew a pink line to show where the player he spectated, who I believe landed dirty docks, should rotate for the first zone. That path he drew would lead him to the dead side and guarantee he makes it to the mid game. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Moving on to the mid game, and as long as you follow my strategies, this should be the easiest part of the match. The mid game is the time from when the second zone starts to when the fifth zone fully closes in. It's also all about rotating. By the time you get to the mid game, you should already have a solid loadout, good mats, and be on the dead side. All you need to do is make smart rotations and you will easily make it to the late game. Here's my mid game zone guide. For the second circle, just like the first one, you want to rotate to the dead side. The dead side of the second zone is extremely easy to reach if you made it to the dead side of the first one. This is because the second zone will always be inside the first, thus no matter where the second zone goes, you should have a really free rotate from the dead side. Also, just in case you guys want to know, the dead side is where you can fight people without getting third partied, so for all of you maniacs looking to fight people, do it on the dead side. Anyways, after the second zone closes in, you want to rotate to the center of the third circle. This is the first zone you're prioritizing getting to the middle of. You still want to keep the dead side in mind, but positioning at the middle of the third zone will set you up really well for the fourth one. Why is that? Well, for the fourth zone, the optimal position is the edge of it. Therefore, by putting yourself at the center of the third circle, you'll have the shortest rotate to the edge of the fourth zone, since the fourth zone will always be inside the third. I'm sorry if this is a little confusing, I get it can be a lot. Trust me though, once you get it down, it is really easy to remember. To reiterate, first and second circles play the dead side. Third circle, rotate to the center of, because that will give you the shortest rotation to the fourth circle, which you want to stay at the edge of. Finally, fifth circle is the half and half one, meaning it is half outside the zone and half inside of it. For the fifth circle and all the ones after it, they technically count towards the late game by the way. You want to get to the dead side if you can, but if you can't, just get inside the zone. It's much more important to stay alive than anything else. The only important thing you need to know about the fifth zone is how it influences your position in the fourth. The fourth zone, the one you're staying at the edge of, is essentially a gamble for getting the fifth zone half and half. You could easily position at the center of the fourth circle if you wanted to, however, you'd be forced to rotate regardless of where it went. We do not want that. We want to take the chance of getting inside or really close to the fifth zone, that way we're not always forced to rotate. Last note I have for the mid game is to remind you guys that launch pads have been removed. Launch pads were the best way to rotate for half and half zone, and now they are officially gone. Don't cry too much though because you still have shock waves, bouncers, spicy fish, and crash pads. All of them are extremely useful to rotate, and I advise you to use as many as you have to to stay alive for the late game. The late game in arena is arguably the most straightforward part of the match. Your goal is to stay alive, rack up kills, and not die. Arena end games are also not really that stacked, so you're not going to have crazy tournament level lobbies, still it is good to know some strategies. In terms of actual tips and tricks, my biggest piece of advice is to stay on a good lair. A lair is essentially the vertical level you are tunneling on. Some examples are high ground which is the best lair to be on, as well as ultimate low ground which is the ground itself. There's nothing wrong with not being on high ground, but there is an issue with staying on a bad lair. A bad lair is one with way too many people on it. These lairs are what get you guys killed because you'll have three different people spraying at you or trying to get into your box. Do your best to avoid bad layers and always build up or down to get onto a new one. Then my other late game tip is to remember to pressure your opponents. Way too many of you guys only focus on getting to zone and staying alive. That's not a bad thing, but going for eliminations will actually help you stay alive longer. Now that launch pads are gone, you're gonna need a few kills to refresh your mats. Nobody has enough 
materials or utility to win the game without any elims. Not to mention, this is also the best time to go for kills. I've advised you guys to play the entire match extremely passively, just trying to make it to endgame. Guess what? You are finally there. This is your time to pop off and rack up a bunch of elims on everyone with half HP. Go make Papa Jerry and proud. Overall, boys and girls, that is how to get more than 1,000 arena points per day. Let me know down below which strat was your favorite, as well as any I may have left out. On top of that, if you enjoyed the video or learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jarian. I'm still trying to shout out everyone for the battle pass, so please let me know if you used it. I want to get everyone's name in at least one video. Help me achieve that. Otherwise, that's it for me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later. Thank you.